Hello there, welcome back to Great Britain. Last time we managed to find a bit of the Mars of India. Missing this promise right here. I thought I got it, but apparently I need to fix my eyesight. It's bad. Really bad. Anyways, we are currently fighting for uh, the trade, ha trade hegemon achievement. And I managed to get my hiccups, so I do apologize for that. We uh, did defeat the Mughals and get that last time. So I guess what we'll really just do today is uh, kick the arms of uh, our enemies and hopefully get Hormuz and Aden. And then we'll probably just go straight for Malacca and uh, solve our issues over there by taking... Uh, or right for us and take Malacca. So all in all, it shouldn't really be uh, too much of a problem before we are done here. The Holy Roman Empire fabricating claims of my provinces is not a good thing. It's actually a pretty damn bad one. So I'll have to solve that sooner or later, basically through a war. So with that said, I do expect there will be a potential war here against the Holy Roman Empire, but uh, I will try to avoid it if I can. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. And this kind of pisses... Oh, it's... What? Now that's confusing. The Persians actually sent an army to Japan. Of all places, they could send an army to send it to Japan. What does matter? That name is about to go. Bye-bye. But as I said, I'll just finish the war. It shouldn't be an issue. As you can see, we are superiorly, we are superior in our choice of technology, so uh, we should be able to beat them without uh, any fuss at all. We'll see how this plays out. For now, I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, well, siege everything I can, and we'll see what the results are. <laughs> Sorry, we'll see what the results end up and up as. My apologies again. I can't speak properly today. Opt for taking another idea here, religious idea, an extra missionary, which should help with my rebel issues once we get off the religious uh, unity. And again, this kind of shows that you kind of have to get those. Uh, you have to get those, uh, well, missionaries and the religious idea three out early. So I guess what I probably will end up doing is go either straight uh, administrative idea for the. Uh, for the uh, adaptability. Just the adaptability or potentially just the religion ideas to start getting uh, that going. Depends, of course, if I choose the Ottomans or the uh, Polish, but I still haven't decided. So I'll do a little bit of a pros and cons for both uh, later. But uh, we'll see how how it uh, ends up or what it comes up or what I come up with, more or less. Let's see, can I actually take those two provinces right now through a peace deal? I can! So, no reason to fight anymore. We'll take Hormuz and Adin right away and with that we have two of the uh, three promises that are required and I think I'm going to use harsh military treatment in this one and then we're just going to actually call that one and we're going to take a chance we're going to fetch those 20,000 men that are standing right here and we're going to send them to uh, to us uh, to fight for Malacca which again shouldn't be that much of a problem so I'll just get everything ready ship them over there and uh, declare war it should be an interesting, uh, <laughs> should be an interesting one. There we go. I was about to say the fleet is in position in Aza, and the claim war here is more or less just a uh, minor, or just a minor issue at this point. Ming is so small they don't really bat, but bother me. Check attack can easily be dealt with, so we'll go for a straight out show superiority. Uh, well, set up here. I'm actually going to keep my navy here for a time being. We're just going to hunt down their smaller armies for a little bit of extra wall score to get uh, to get everything done e done easily, done quickly. Ottomans is uh, requesting that I join their jihad against the whole Roman Empire. And I have no idea if they actually declare that on their own. They're actually attackers, so yeah, they did declare that on their own. Um, I think I'll decline. The game is almost over. It would have been nice to fight the whole Roman Empire, but I can't really put my... Uh, I can't really put my... Uh, attention on it long enough to well make something worth it Def I would I'm pretty damn confident I would defeat them if I just well fetch my troops and otherwise just prepare for battle we have twice the amount of manpower we have far more troops we can most likely defeat them if I raise my force limit I have money enough to hire a ton of mercenaries so I don't really see uh, I don't really see how they would have won this especially since my production efficiency well, my production now is going up thanks to, well, the promises are actually starting to cool down and hand over some production value. So, all in all, this uh, 
tends to boost my economy to the point where I could actually make something work. But unfortunately, that's not the that's not the case right now. So for the time being, we'll just uh, try and take uh, take Malacca here. And I don't expect it to be... Well, I don't expect to run into any problems. We're just going to do some quick sieges and that should be about it. And while that is happening, I guess I could do a little bit of a chat about what I'm planning to do with... Uh, with the, all the pros and cons of the uh, a potential Ottoman versus a Poland game. Of course, with Poland I can get the uh, Winged Hassan's achievement and also Poland into space. But it's kind of risky if I want to go for World Conquest at the same time. Since a bad rule of three could potentially set me on a level where I won't be able to afford to call or basically make peace deals, whatever you want to say really there. But Poland actually has a pretty good starting position. You can get uh, Lithuania through a decision. You can uh, actually join the Holy Roman Empire, I believe, if you just, well, make Austria like you. Uh, but during the Holy Roman Empire, you get a ton of uh, benefits. You can't do that as... Uh, as the Ottomans, but again, Poland's positioning is a little bit uh, weird. It makes you fo it forces you to fight your neighbor neighbors rather than bad. I can't really go after the colonizers. I have to make an extensive effort to do so, and that makes things a little bit uh, a little bit awkward. But uh, it's not really that much of a problem per se. The problem appears once I actually want to try and. Uh, also want to try and actually wage well wars against say France, England, Spain, sorry, Castile, Aragon, Portugal, that bunch. It's going to be difficult because of Poland's position, and of course also I want to take some parts of the inner workings of the Holy Roman Empire. It's good to be able to bypass them, of course, but I'm a little bit unsure how I will be able to work it. And if, if I actually manage to become Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, then definitely Poland does have the upper hand, since Central Europe then will more or less be taken like well, a play. I can just release Styria, Tyrol, so forth from Austria, break Bohemia apart, create a ton of small estates, and that would definitely be uh, that would definitely be useful. The only negative with that, of course, is that I have to spend a ton of effort and a ton of uh, a ton of money to just keep every everything running, everything working, which of course is going to be uh, will keep everyone small within the Holy Roman Empire, which isn't just going to be difficult it's going to be annoying as well so they can't really move freely but it should it it could be a fun game to actually just try that when it comes to Ottomans of course they are in more or less a prime position you can basically go any direction you desire with relative ease of course with the Ottomans the plan of course will be most likely to attack an Irish miner to get into uh, into England and also I think attack uh, Granada potentially to get into uh, to Spain and they just keep on picking on the smaller nations. All shit can easily be picked apart uh, early in the war. You also have the uh, core lesson cost. So if you add that up with the administrative, you can definitely make uh, make some good good choices there. You also have the boost to your missionaries and all that. So potentially, just going after or going for uh, going for the Ottomans could be probably that's probably the easier route, which again tempts me to test uh, what I can do with. Uh, with Poland. So what I think I'll actually do here is uh, once I'm done with this episode I'm probably going to sit down a couple of hours, do a couple of test games with both and see how my different tactics actually work or how my different tactics wow let me begin again and test a couple of the different tactics and see how they work out in the early game because that's definitely the most important. Uh, let's face it it's not that important really to block the colonizers in uh, it really isn't that important to block the colonizers in this area right here. Of course, I could potentially get some colony nations with uh, the wrong religion. But other than that, I wouldn't potentially get too much into trouble, to be perfectly honest. I'm pretty sure I can still just get five cores in each colonial area, which won't be too expensive, and then just, well, conquer. It's not really an issue. I don't really have to focus too much on... Uh, on the area right here. What I will have to focus on uh, as the Ottomans of course is blocking uh, Muscovy and Russia and that I'll also have to do as Poland. Both of them are actually in pretty good position to do that so they both stand equal in that opportunity and also of course the colonization aspect. I don't have to do anything there but I would like to colonize because it will make my life easier and I don't have to micromanage the uh, North and South Americas but uh, we'll consider that 
as time goes by. There we go, Malacca is ours, and with that I'm pretty sure Trade Hegemon should fire. There we go, we got Trade Hegemon, which was actually fairly easy. I'll do a little bit of check and see if there's any other achievement that I can get in this game, but I think this might be the end. We'll see. This we've seen there's much else I can do in this game. I could go for World Discoverer, traditional player, and all that. But I'll probably get that once I do a World Conquest. I don't really see that as a point. I might like make an episode later where I do that, but right now there's not really much else I can do. I can always play to the end. I can always see if I can boost my trade even further. With a 2.5% income from trade with an Empire this big definitely puts me in a dominant position. I'm earning 145 ducats extra a month right now. So, and my trade is definitely my biggest single income. <laughs> it's actually funny that my tariffs are about the size of the taxation. So, uh, we definitely have the... Uh, we definitely are the economic powerhouse. And we are the army powerhouse. 381,000 men versus... Well... 206,000 for the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire is already out of the manpower, so potentially... Attacking them all my, by myself now could potentially be a good idea, but... I don't think I want to. I'll... I might make another episode where I do that just for fun, but right now... I don't see a good point in doing that other than practice, of course, fighting bigger empires, which is basically just a attrition war, more or less. Navies, we're also in charge. The only thing we're really losing on here is galleys and heavy ships, because I don't really use them. Light ships are definitely the way to go for me, and... Uh, could have a, a lot larger navy. Again, not that actually... Uh, going that high on my force limit. And as you can see here, I get quite a bit from merchants. Global Empire too. Hmm. So, on that, any other interesting things here? Yeah, my income is about twice as, <laughs> twice as much as the Roman Empire. And, well, with that said, if you go from Bohemian down here, I'm going to earn quite a lot more. Let's put it into perspective. My, the 6th and 8th and 10th are actually, uh, well, Nations of mine all under my control, more or less. So we are perfectly, uh, we're perfectly fine in that respect. We still have a big English base, mostly from colonies, I would presume. And Japanese is also a big one. And I would assume that, yeah, it's just too many different Indian uh, cultures to get a minority of some description. We also definitely need to focus on uh, religion in future games. But other than that, I think we did fairly well. Though I did kind of do things that slowed me down quite a bit. I'm also pretty happy with how this ended up with, uh, well, the Indian and Japanese achievement. And also, of course, Trade Hegemon, which is actually really, really easy once you become big. You really just have to use the, the uh, overseas expansion of Castle's Bell Eye, and you can solve it in three simple wars. So it's not really that difficult. But uh, give me some input on what you uh, think. Uh, but I'm probably going to have to have already decided what I want to do in terms of my next game. But uh, do some input. Do I, should I make a, another episode where I basically just uh, record the entire thing, fight the Holy Roman Empire, and potentially tear them a little bit to pieces? If that sounds interesting, just uh, tell me, and we'll see what I can come up with. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like, and hopefully I'll see you around next time. Bye.